Hello, friends. Robert Bevan here, author of the Caverns and Creatures series of comedy, fantasy, novels, and short stories. With me is Sam West, and today we're going to be covering the feat, Skulker. Oh, <laughs> we lost our headphones, but it's all right. Um, we're back. Yeah, this uh, this should play into my my rogue fantasy, the the character that I want to play. But uh, reading reading it over, it doesn't feel like that much to get excited about. Uh, ah, yeah. what do you think? I'm in t- I entirely agree. It is. <laughs> Right, you don't ever need this. Yeah. Okay, Skulker, it lets you... You need to the text of 13 or higher, which that's a weird prerequisite. Most, a lot of these don't have prerequisites. Well, the ones that do, I just go, but why? Uh, anyway, you're an expert at <laughs> slinking through shadows. You gain the following benefits. You can try to hide when you are lightly obscured from the creature which you are hiding from. Um, We'll touch on that in a second. When you are hidden from a creature and miss it with a ranged weapon attack, making the attack doesn't reveal your position. I, I will go as far as to say, I think that is the only relevant text in this feat, and that, that's pretty good text. Um, the last one is Dim Light doesn't impose disadvantage on your wisdom perception checks. Lying on sight. Um, that's it. That's called right. Let's, uh, hmm. All right, let's, let's cover that last one first. Dim Light doesn't impose disadvantage on your wisdom checks. Your, um, when does that matter? It doesn't. So the reason it doesn't <laughs> okay. that's my favorite answer um so okay already players don't tend to play a lot with darkness because dark vision exists dark vision kind of created this solution that half the party could see in the dark and the other half couldn't because so many races in this game get it it's not like a, a neat tool that only the one rare elf has anymore. It's just like, a, oh no, most of the races, the most, half of the races in this game can see in the dark. So that yeah. means a lot of tables run into one of the, they immediately face with this problem where they go, oh, well, if everyone, if half the players can see in the dark, everyone should just huddle behind them and let them see so we're not revealed by the torch. And when that leads to happening is the game just stops making environments where that matters because there's there's not really an interesting puzzle there anymore, right? They, either players are carrying a torch and it's not a big disadvantage anyway, or the players are seeing in the dark and everything's fine. So the dark, the darkness versus light problem of navigating in places, dark vision kind of made it difficult, and not necessarily difficult, inconvenient to really make a problem. So other more interesting problems are introduced instead, and it's kind of faded to the back front or back uh, the background. Dim light already was getting shit on before this happened. Dim light was already the in between the darkness problem, where it was like, do we care? what is in the dim light of these torches that we already are saying don't really matter all that much anymore? And the answer to that question in Quibble is no. These are rules that I'm, at least, outside of the most rule warriors tables, didn't matter full stop. And at those tables were pretty menial at best, because the creatures with dark vision didn't have any problem with those perception checks anyway, they just see things in black and white, right? So, like, dim light already was a non-real problem that next to, I don't want to say next to no one, tables that I've played in and tables that I have heard the discourse around have never even considered using. Like, it hasn't jumped into our into the, the front of your brain that it can be something you're worried about. Whenever your thing gives off dim light at 15 feet and bright light at 15 feet, that's just, you can see in the space in creatures without dark vision. It's functionally how it works. Because so often, perception checks are more than just sight. So often, perception checks are, like, complex getting in information. And most of the time, it's just the DM info dumping the thing that they want the players to see anyway. Very rarely is this entirely something that matters. Now, whenever it comes to like finding hidden creatures and stuff, that's where it gets a little bit more important, and that's where passive perception tends to play in a lot more because passive perception is also used to decide, decide if you check hidden creatures at some tables, even though it's not necessarily rules is written because the hiding rules are scuffed, and we're going to cover that in a second. But the important thing is about dim light is that it all out the gate. You, I don't think the majority of people that have played this game have made it. Wisdom perception check with disadvantage because of dim light. Bob, can you recall making a wisdom perception check at disadvantage because of dim light? Mm. You have? I said no, I can't recall that. Oh, oh, I thought you said yes. And I was like, wow, mm. I'm just way I'm way out of my lane. Um, yeah. yeah. It, it, it's not a thing. I don't think it's um, a thing, at least. So I think it's safe to say that next to no one is taking this feat for this effect. Right. So we can get to the like moderately meaningful effect. Um 
this is nifty and it's nifty specifically because of how the rogue class plays so whenever you are whenever you are hidden from a creature and miss it with a ranged weapon attack it doesn't reveal your position that's nifty because it gives you your bonus action to do something else as opposed to hide again which the normal rogue play pattern is you bonus action hide attack and then you reveal and that's one way you can do it alternatively you can attack bonus action hide and then next round you'll have advantage and can make the loop with advantage, which is better. So often you'll have like the first round you're not hidden, and then every round stuff's going after that. You're taking the high uh, bonus action, and if you're getting high enough uh, stealth checks, again, given that there's the conditions are right, so you're in a heavily obscured, you got full cover, something like that is happening. Um, then you can weaponize stealth that way. Like I said earlier, that's going to range table to table because stealth checks are run inconsistently. Um... And I'll tell you how I do it. I'm confident it's close to rules as written. I say that as long as you have objects to hide behind and can meaningfully obscure your, where you are coming from, where you're attacking from, you can say you're hidden. And the stealth tech is often going to be involved in subterfuge. It's going to be involved in feigning. It's going to be involving like tactics where your goal is, even if there's only one piece of cover, you can use that same piece of cover over and over again as you're shooting out from different angles. You're shooting out from different spots. They're not necessarily prepared for exactly where you are. And that run stealth to me unless you make the high checks that makes their contested perception checks or um passive perception meaningful um so like you know i'm usually i'm they're not making perception they're contesting with the passive perception that'll often be determining if you're gonna be advantage or not um when i say advantage or not the the benefits of attacking from an unseen location um <laughs> this lets you say if you miss the attack roll you don't have to hide again which means you can do something else and that's kind of neat. That lets you dash to another location while still hidden, which means you can kind of oftentimes leverage the same stealth roll to get to a different spot entirely, which is pretty good as a rogue. Um, there are other rogue subclasses that have interesting, like the um, Mastermind, for example, can bonus action ranged help somebody. That's pretty good. If you can attack miss as opposed to having to rehide, you can be like, okay, fine, you get advantage of this attack roll. That's kind of meaningful. I think on a Mastermind rogue, that's not the worst thing ever. It's not really like absurd, but it, it's, it's handy. Uh, additionally, this can be the kind of thing where like, if you... Um, if you need to disengage, if you need to dodge, if you need, or not dodge, if you need to disengage specifically, this gives you uh, a way to attack a creature that may not know you're under the table from it and not reveal yourself, and that can be useful in some instances. It is fine, and it's definitely not worth a feat, but it's nice to have. I really wish this was a rogue class feature, because I think that's where it becomes a lot more interesting, um, but, you know, right. it's not. Now... So. Having talked about that second line of text, it makes me feel like the first line is actually worth something. Okay, so let's talk about the environment, because this is going to be important for it. So the first line is, you can try and hide when you are lightly obscured in the creature which you're attempting to hide from. So, normally, to hide, you need to be heavily obscured. Heavily obscured area, such as darkness, opaque fog, or dense foliage, blocks vision entirely. That is, the three prior to it are examples. The important text is that an area is considered heavily obscured to you if your vision of it isn't blocked in its entirety. This is important because a lightly obscured area only requires you... It doesn't specify. It just gives you examples. Uh, a lightly obscured area such as dim light, patchy fog, or moderate, or moderate foliage. Those creatures have disadvantage, so like you're mostly unseen. Um, a lightly obscured area conceivably could it be an allied creature it could be as much as a you know uh one of those good, like really fancy fans that you like cover yourself with uh, it, it'll vary table to no, table I'm... because it doesn't give us a great definition of it but I'm the idea now is just... you can hide in more open spaces i'm just thinking about dim light oh yeah i mean, I mean that's where that feels like a really significant place for uh dim light to uh I hate to use the word shine, but um <laughs> that's fair. Yeah. Um my question is how many environments do you need do you not have the ability to hide in? And I think that's gonna determine the value of this feature. Because if you're right, if you're in the situation oh and okay, that's there has a caveat there. The creature has to care that the dim light heavily obscures them. And some creatures will not view the area... I'm oh, sorry, lightly obscures them. Some creatures will not view the dim light as a lightly obscuring condition. Some, And that's because of the way dim light is framed. Because dim light is... The, the heavily obscurity is framed. Again, there's not good definitions for these things. There's so... there's Text is missing from this book. Um, so if we're looking at, like, a creature looking into dim light, right? 
it will be lightly obscured to them in regular vision. It will be looking like into Apache fog for them if they are looking without dark vision. A creature with dark vision sees through it like they would see through darkness is easily, right? It sees, it sees through all of the, the light and darkness without really agnostic to it being any kind of hidden or anything like that. So there will be creatures that just don't give a shit. There will be creatures that will look into it and say, I can still see you. You cannot hide from me because I have dark vision and then this doesn't matter at all. Most monsters have dark vision because they're fighting you from the dark. A lot of things that you want to be encountering here are doing those kinds of things. Again, if you're doesn't, gonna... dark, doesn't dark vision have range, though? Yeah. So if you are very far away and hiding in dim light, yes, that could work. Um, very far away. I mean, what the range is like typically 60 feet, right? I mean, yeah, 60 or 120, depending on the creature. I mean, that's, All right, 120 is very far away. That's, but I'm thinking, that's, to be fair, not many. That's superior dark vision. That's like drow and deep domes and stuff. I'm thinking 60 feet, though. You're a rogue with a bow. You're like in a meadow at night, you know, just a wide open space. You're dim light. I mean, can hey, you see I'm, them? I'm though. hiding. Well, for a reason, yes. I don't know. <laughs> See, now we start to like get into some small little issues. Um I I think that there will be some tables where you'd care about being able to hide in lightly obscured areas. I think those area tables are gonna be the ones that tend to lack a lot of dynamic environments, and by that I mean have lots of stuff to do in objects filling the spaces. There'll be a lot of checkerboards with creatures going and fighting each other without a tremendous amount of cover, without a really dynamic or even like input from the players to fill the space. So like I often will encourage my players to be like, if you want something in the room, tell me because it'll add dynamic to the story. It'll add life to the scene and that'll improve the gameplay. It'll give people cool opportunities to shine. It'll give moments to really like explore and my monsters can exploit those things just as well. I can, you know, fill things in the space that I may have forgotten to mention. It's a collaborative experience, right? Um, but outside of that experience, there will be people that have really well built and they'll get really well defined. This is a study with these three different desks and there's a chest and there's a whole bunch of other things that the rogues can already leverage to get full cover, to get half cover, to get lightly obscurity, um, which then also works with, you know, the skulker feed. At tables like that, I think cover is ample enough and there's enough places to hide that you don't need this. But if you are at tables where you're in the checkerboard cavern, where you're in the wide open cave and you have the torches and you're fighting through pockets of darkness... It becomes a lot better. It gives you a realistic and consistent way to hide because you can hide in light obscurity, and light obscurity is going to be way more common in more broad and open spaces, which is going to be a specific table-to-table -table kind of problem. All right, one more question about the dim light. Uh, going back to that third line of text, dim light doesn't impose disadvantage on your wisdom. So if you are you just out in a meadow on a moonless night, or no, you can see normally. Full, full moonlight, yeah. Yeah, you can see normally. So, you know, the, the creature's dark vision doesn't even enter into it because they can see normally too, but, you know, you are still able to hide, right? Um, uh, again, not from the creatures that can see normally in the dark vision. Not the creatures treat di that treat dim light like it is bright light, which are creatures with dark vision, I believe. I'm living, <laughs> I've got so many pages of those pulled up. Let me get the dark vision. <laughs> the dark vision still has range. Oh, that's I'm saying you're more great. than sixty feet away from it. You know, it's it's dark vision doesn't you know affect its effect stops here, so you can see it in dim light, and it it could ostensibly see you if you weren't hiding in the dim light because of this feet. I will say ostensibly, sure, because I I think rules is written that sounds bullshit enough that it could be the true like i think that i think there could be <laughs> i think there that has could... to be a reason for this feat to exist bob the reason this feat exists is because they wanted to give edgy characters ways to interact with the game mechanics and those game mechanics just happen to be ass since people didn't really use them and so the feat doesn't really get to be that good i think that's ultimately where skulker lands is that the majority <laughs> of people aren't gonna be fighting in moonlit nights looking to take advantage and hide from creatures of dark vision that way and especially because like that's just like in an open field with like no trees or anything <laughs> Yeah, I'm giving a, a devil's advocate example here. Mm -hmm. sure. I'm saying they're you know, being able to hide in, in dim light or in light obscurity, whatever that is. Uh, I, I think it has its uses. I, I think that is the second most impactful words on this. I think, again, like I said, there will be some tables where it will let you go from hiding almost nowhere to hiding in some more places. And that is a very valuable at some tables, right? If you're the rogue that you're looking to really get that advantage of those attack rolls, you're really looking to attack from unseen places, that is a way to do it. Because um, when you're hiding, you can get yourself in a position of being unseen to then make the attack rolls, which is important. Um, 
I don't think that's most tables. I don't think most people ever should take this. I don't think rogues should take this. And this is a feat aimed at rogues. Um, this doesn't even have a plus one dex on it. Like, it's a legacy feat, right? It's from PHB. So, like, it doesn't... Those feats didn't really get a lot of... It gets the plus one mod and this very niche little thing. This feat needs that very... That plus one dex to justify its existence. It doesn't have it, so you probably don't want to take it. I don't know. I am I wasn't excited about this when we started the video, but I'm warming up to it now. Bob, I would remember how I asked you how many times have you had your wisdom perception checks made with disadvantage because you were in dim light? And I would like you to consider then that same number of times would have given you additional opportunities to hide. More than I took advantage of. Okay, sure. You'd have like two extra opportunities to hide over the course of your rogue playing days. I'm thinking if I went into this game I'm building my rogue with this in mind, I would find ways to use it. I think that is doable. I don't think it's good. I think you could take a better feat like Magic Initiate and get find weight. Not even necessarily have to think about it. Just stumble into ways that makes that good. Two cantrips and a spell seems way better than this, right? And that's like, even if being sneaky, you could take, like, Minor Illusion. You could take, like, Disguise Self. You could take any number of sneaky, stealthy, hidey spells like just silent image can do way more than skulker ever can because it does it creates a physical space as opposed to letting you change how the rules work for you and that's going to be a lot larger impact i'm not arguing that this is better than magic initiative that's that's fair that's fair i am arguing characters that would be considering this i would recommend considering feats like magic initiate to get a robust stealth toolbox as opposed to getting a feat that makes dim light slightly better for you because that's like I don't think that's that good. And I don't think most tables are going to find that it's very good. If you're just in broad daylight, this has no text. I mean, there's... there's it is because... That's, the middle text is still text. That's fair. Well, there's that. And also, I mean, lightly obscured isn't just dim light. There's, there's other lightly obscured uh, situations. Like underbrush. There you go. Hashy fog. Moderate foliage. That's Over what here. technically quantifies as lightly obscured, okay. and nothing else is written, so that's what we get to work with. If there's um, a tree in the vicinity, you're covered. <laughs> Some tables, sure. Be like, uh, you're on the horizon with more than two objects. That's lightly obscured. Hide, buddy. Play this, <laughs> like, at that point, you're just doing the World of Warcraft sneak, though, right? And like That's happened to some tables anyway, so I don't know. Um, I think the moral of the story is we desperately need gamified language for lightly obscured and heavily obscured we def- desperately need a way to be like in a more concise and clear manner tell us how these things work um and in a section dedicated to it because having yeah. to jump between 12 different chapters to try and piece together how the hiding rules work for a character whose whole identity is hiding nah i don't want to do that i don't think most players do that's why you get these wild and robust and different oh. ways to do it that are often better than what's written so like i don't know i'll agree I, with you there i think most tables this feat has almost no text outside of the niche benefit of being able to not be revealed when you miss. And that's only going to be good on a handful of characters that also want to do something else with their bonus action while hiding. So like, and this is exclusively in the scope of the rogue class. No other class has anywhere near a desire (laughs) to take this feat. Like Rangers, nope, you can't be here, Rangers. I'm sorry. This is not giving you anything you care about enough. You have passed that trace, that's giving you plus 10 to stealth checks, and you're not taking anything else like this ever again. No, thank you. You can't tend to spending your action to hide. Are you kidding me? Get out of here. Get out of here. Um, all right, I guess I'm, I think that's as much as we can cover without going back, going in circles. I think so. Um, you're correct in that, yeah, these need to be more clearly defined before we can have any more meaningful discussion about them. But uh, like, uh, as it stands, what? Go ahead. Uh, this is the text that we get for lightly obscured. In a lightly obscured area such as dim light, patchy fog, and moderate foliage, creatures have disadvantage of wisdom perception checks to rely on sight. That is it. That is the, all of the text for the full scope of the lightly obscured condition. So lightly obscured, such as, it doesn't mean exclusively patchy fog. And but it doesn't like, describe what it. I, I know. <laughs> I know. Um. But yeah, I think you're like, we're going we're going in circles again. I'm sorry, I'm just complaining about rules too. So. That's all right. That's all right. Um, 
I hate to ask. You got a rating? I, I, I don't think this is a one. Like I said, there will be some tables where the lightly obscured hiding is genuinely very, very good. Don't, like tables that don't necessarily have robust cover, tables that don't necessarily leverage. Um, so again, I like to call them dynamic environments, but environments that have a lot of stuff in them, lots of places to hide. Um, at those tables, this can be very useful. This can let your rogue do something they otherwise couldn't. And I think on those character sheets, this is a perfectly fine, probably still a two, because you can take better feats like Sharpshooter and a bunch of other feats that do damage and help you navigate the game in other ways. At those tables, it's a two. I think that justifies it being a two across the board. I'm going to give it a three. I'm a little more excited about it. And as we, as I say, oftentimes, for the reasons that we haven't discussed that our, our viewers will comment and, uh, and correct us on. Um, yeah. Looking I'd, forward to your comments. What? I'd imagine at tables that have like very like old dungeon crawl classic style adventuring where you care about the torches and the dim light and stuff. This could be probably maybe fine. I don't know how those tables play though. So, but yeah, tell us if you have that experience. All right. Well, that was Skulker. Thank you, Sam, and thank you, everyone, for joining us. We'll see you next time. Bye-bye. Thank you for watching. If you found this helpful, informative, or entertaining, I'd really appreciate it if you hit the like button below. You needn't smash it. A gentle tap will suffice. If you want to see more videos like this, subscribe to the channel. And make sure you check out the links in the description, where you'll find my Caverns and Creatures series of comedy fantasy novels, Sam's full review of the spell, and other fun things.